Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome to the final Honest Trailer commentary of the ever, year. Ever. Of all time. Well, you never we're, know. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. In the, in, with digital media and the state that it's, it's you really do never know. Uh, you should actually, when, if we were to ever zoom out this camera, you'd see a guillotine uh, hovering just, <laughs> yeah. just over our heads. We are in the pit and the pendulum <laughs> right now. <laughs> we're going to talk about our Honest Trailer this week, which was a year in review wrap-up, uh, plus handed out some awards for 2023. And oh, what a year it was. Oh, boy, it's embarrassing. Cinema is back, baby. <laughs> Maybe next year. Um, we also have, uh, we don't have any outtakes. Uh, we will, and we don't, next week, we don't know. Well, we're just running reruns next week. So really, it's just Q&A. So keep those questions yeah, coming at the just, end. Just throw us whatever you got. Really. And yeah. Um, so yeah, we're just going to talk about the year in film and, and, and streaming entertainment. Luckily, what was your, what was your, what's your number one? What was your favorite movie of, of 2023? Um... Right now. Obviously, it's still stuff left to see if you haven't caught it all. Aquaman 2, definitely going to get in there. Yeah, I was going to say Aquaman 2. <laughs> like, uh, how could that not qualify? Uh, the Holdovers was good. Um, I haven't seen that one yet. I got to see that one. That was really good. Uh, there's some, I, I want to see like Zone of Interest. I feel yeah, like I'm going to like that. I really want to see that um, one. But... Man, I don't. I'd have to. I don't keep Nothing. notes like you. I'd have no, to, no number. Let me go. One. Well, yeah, you you have your whole uh, your whole thing I prepared. I, I, I have can, to go I back mentally. Uh, I can only remember what I did yesterday. I'll read. I'll read. And you. I watched Air. <laughs> <laughs> I went. It's, Air's good. It was fine. Look, it was entertaining. Once upon a time, I like shoes. Long some guys had some meat. <laughs> I like. I mean, it just, I like it, Nike it, Jordans. It's just, very, okay. <laughs> Yep, you. That's a brand. I was. I was already on. Uh, I was already. I'd already drank the Kool Aid. You let's the, the, of so, collecting sneakers. I, I, okay, it's a story about it was a, story about of, a brand. Yep. All right, that, that, that great. Uh, you know, just didn't just didn't didn't do much. For, okay, for fine. Me. Well, so this is we're just gonna argue about air for the rest <laughs> of the time. This is the whole show. <laughs> What else I got, really, Lon? I What'd really like? liked. I liked Killers of the Flower Moon a lot. I like May December a lot, which is on Netflix right now. There's this one called Godland that's on Criterion Channel right now. That's like this very Herzogian story about mm, this. Uh, Herzogian. Yeah, it's like. What's a, the name of his um, memoir that he just dropped? It's like God Dies, Man yeah, Laughs. Or something. It's, <laughs> it's something the like best. That, it's yeah. the best title for a memoir. It's about like this this Danish guy that uh, Danish priest who takes a journey to Iceland. This is in like the the 19th century to build a church on this new they, they're gonna they have to move the, the the christian population to a different side of the island because there's a volcano so he's gonna go supervise the construction of a new church that's how but you it, get bjorked but it's yeah but it's just like iceland in this time was just like so desolate and barren and traveling across it was like this really harrowing journey and mm. it was so far and even for a guy from a different part of scandinavia it's really fascinating so cool. like those, those are some of my favorites nice um Werner herzog's memoir is called every man for himself and god against and god all. against all right that's, <laughs> that's so true. metal um what were we talking about oh yeah 2023 any, any i was just t- asking your TV favorite highlights? your your oh lots of good tv this year i really like silo that apple tv <laughs> that seems like a fake show it's real don't leave the silo oh who's gonna get it what's outside the silo what's well, outside? I mean, you, you kind of find out but just we're get we're just starting to get some hints <laughs> about what's going on outside the silo <laughs> we gotta, just, we gotta figure it out folks you, you gotta wait what's till outside the, the silo yeah they're all i mean it's all trump talking about silo would be really funny <laughs> Uh, there, I mean, every every puzzle box show is kind of the same thing. Yep. Like they're all sort of built, but I I, I thought Silo was particularly uh, great. Obviously, this was su- um this was the Succession year. Obviously, Succession, yep. uh, the Bear, I thought was great. Reservation Dogs went out on a real yep. uh, on a real high note. I really liked that one. Uh, did you watch? There was that FX uh, mystery show that just wrapped up. Uh, I think today is the finale. I watched it uh, last night. A Murder at the End of the World. No. It's uh, Britt Marling and Zal Mungli. I don't know how you pronounce this. I think the sound of my voice people, they did the OA also oh, yeah. for Netflix. Okay. Uh, so it's their new one. Really weird. And it's another one of these like Agatha Christie where it's like a bunch of people at this rich tech guys kind of meet. He calls this you know meeting of all of these minds. Once every few years, and they all gather at this remote uh, hotel that he's built, and then it becomes like people start dying. And a it becomes, like, a mystery. Yeah. But Emma, Emma Corrin from The Crown, uh, they're they're the lead. The sort of detective Clive Owens in it. Uh, I thought that was really cool, and it, it it wraps up the mystery in a way that feels very, it's it's like modern and contemporary, but it feels very like Agatha Christie. Like this is how Agatha Christie would have wrapped this up. Nice. I thought that that well, I, I that one really kind of surprised me. I really enjoyed it. 
Well, there you go. So there's some highlights. There's some gems throughout the year if you if you choose to pick through. Oh, also Blue Eye Samurai. Did you see Blue Eye Samurai? I've heard a lot. I've heard good oh, things. It's awesome. Yeah, it's really good. It's yeah. Really good. Um, so there you go. Uh, our honest trailer is more negative. Um, <laughs> it's more <laughs> about everything I that like. went wrong. Now, stuff that I <laughs> now here's uh, let's take a look at everything that went wrong. And boy, was there a lot in entertainment. Uh, strike shortened year. Um, there were a lot of streaming um, cutbacks. I guess you could call it. Yeah, I mean, this was the year when it really became obvious that streaming on its own can't replace all of the other revenue streams that that Hollywood is now losing. Like, they, they, all this money was coming in from cable TV ads, theatrical movies, licensing, all, all, all of these revenue streams that kind of got shut down as we went towards peak streaming. And streaming platforms are doing pretty well, but they're not doing well enough to subsidize all these other losses. And so it's and really all like... And they're spending on, on original programs. Right. Like is... they, they, all the, they're spending more on content now and they're bringing in a lot less, which I don't know if we have any business majors watching, but that's <laughs> not really how it's supposed to go. Oh, uh, cue the guillotine. All right. Um, so that is, uh, that's where we're at, but let's see what we wrote about the year 2023, Australia style. Hit it. <laughs> I want the box right now. <laughs> In an era where Nicole Kidman accurately predicted what opening weekends would look like, physical media is gone for good, and cable TV is on its last gasp. Hollywood made a chilling discovery. Streaming makes way less money than all of that. So, panic! <laughs> The year in entertainment, 2023. So pause. I, let's let's do large scale business prediction for 2024 plus two years or something. Here's mine. We're going full circle. We're going back to cable. We're going back yeah. to free content with advertising yeah. as the main way people watch television. I mean, this is already happening. Like we like to be all, all, all well, but. Amazon even, like, they already have Freevo. Freebie, Freebie but now they're going to add, <laughs> ads are coming to Prime Video as well. Unless you pay a few dollars more, you're going to start getting Prime Video ads as well. They're all going that way. That's that. I, I feel like that's even less of a prediction, yeah. more of just like, here's what's happening, folks. Uh, I think there's that, and then the other half of that, I think, is consolidation. So it's going to start being just like, again, as with cable, you're going to get more ads, and you're going to get more bundles and package deals. And, hey, if you're a Verizon customer, you can get Netflix and Max for one low, low price. Mm -hmm. And, like, Apple and Paramount are apparently having this conversation right now about just packaging them together. Paramount already did this with Showtime. So, like, yeah, that, it, it, there's, there's not going to be 10 major U.S. streaming platforms. There's going to be more like three. And, and we've even seen, like, what AMC and Max have been doing. We'll probably see more stuff like that where – AMC did their like pop up in Max, where like here's ten AMC shows for free this month if you have Max. So all kinds of stuff like that because there just aren't enough people paying enough subscription fees for all of these platforms to exist. <coughs> like Peacock, some of their shows are doing pretty good. People are signing up. It's just not fast enough. Like they can't, they just can't scale up. Yeah. There you go. So those are your, uh, lock those down for 2024. We'll see what comes true. Also, definitely there's going to be more uh, attempts to force like Barbenheimer type stuff. Like that's on everybody's uh. radar. <laughs> Every marketing person in Hollywood is very like keyed into that. They're they're whether or not it's true, they're very convinced that the success of Barbie and Oppenheimer both had to do with this social media trend. And so you're going to see a lot more like not even just both movies opening on the same day, but I just predict a lot more like forced coupling. How can we goose the virality on this in any way possible? We saw it with like the trying to make viral dances happen. There's just going to be so much more obnoxious crap like that. Trying to use virality to like push these projects. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, dark. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Keep, going. Great. Keep going. Keep going. It's been 63 years since writers and actors went on strike at the same time when Democrat union leader Ronald Reagan resolved the crisis. This year, it was all-out war between creatives and execs over who gets well, more pause. dead chairs on the Titanic. Do you think the fact that um, then-Democrat union leader Ronald Reagan uh, became the next president, the governor of California and then the president, uh, does that pave the way for Fran Drescher to do the same? I mean, we can only hope. We can only hope. Can, Although, but... 
she could also take a hard right turn, you know. That, yeah. we, but we'll see. The Drescher uh, tyranny is one that I welcome with I open mean, arms. <laughs> well, listen, we definitely know she's great at managing relations with at least the UK. At yeah. least our relationship with yeah. the United Kingdom. And, mean. you know, I, I, I like living in a nanny state. hey <laughs> hey I see what you did there. Uh, I see what you did. All right, keep going. <laughs> Big, where the minds behind today's nonstop parade of mildly entertaining streaming shows. Parades a nonstop stream of mildly entertaining protest signs. Until the studios caved on better pay, more jobs, and protection against AI, but drew a hard line at letting the public look at their viewership numbers. If anyone finds out how many people watch Bupkis on Peacock, this whole house of cards goes down. Yes, sir. What the f*** is a Bupkis? <laughs> Think the killing joke Pause. was the worst thing. Do you watch Bupkis? No, I don't. And you watch everything. I try oh, to God, watch as that's... much as I try to watch as much as I can, but no, I I, I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest with you. I don't I don't really get. Pete Davis. I don't. I don't. I. I struggle to get the appeal as purely as. A, I'm not talking about like his his dating life or whatever. Like he's I, tall I, and like I accept he that, has the symbol the yeah. symbolism of being funny. Right. I. I. I, I accept that, that 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 will always remain. You know, the women and what they like always will remain a mystery to me. I'm just purely talking about comedy, just in terms of comedy. I don't. I just don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't really think he's very funny. Yeah. No, I agree. It's not even um, personal against him. I just, like, I don't get, like, I watch him and I'm like, uh, okay, he's definitely got a bit that he does. I was I thinking, don't... like, no, no, Shy Ronnie's funny, but that's Kyle. Is, isn't that Kyle Mooney? Wait, no, Shy Ronnie was uh, Andy Samberg. Oh, okay. Well, Shy Ronnie's funny. <laughs> I think yeah, no, we can Andy, all agree. Andy Samberg, I like. Shy yeah, Ronnie's Andy Samberg, funny. I appreciate. Yeah, I, uh, I just, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, Chad, that was his character was Chad. Right, right, right. And it's like, it's always kind of, or he, or he like, he does a rap, like, I'm going to rap about Squid Game. Everybody's watching Squid Game and here's my rap about it. And it's like, oh, okay. He's got that thing where it sort of feels like he's trying to make me think that he's cool, which is inherently not funny. I don't know, man. I don't know what his secret is, but I'm jealous. I mean, whatever. No, it is. I mean things are going <laughs> things are going great for him. It'd probably be better if Bupkiss was on Prime Video or something. But otherwise, things are going great for him. Yeah. I just it's not yeah like that that didn't. I like Joe Pesci too, but it didn't jump out as something like I need to see. <laughs> Joe Pesci. Oh right, right, right. I was like, wait, what? Oh yeah, Joe that's Pesci plays his grandfather. It's like, who is Joe Pesci had sex with? But now I understand. Joe Pesci and up. Pete Davidson. They're yeah. a thing. There you go. <laughs> All right, keep going. Think the killing joke was the worst thing to happen to Batgirl? Then you haven't met David Zaslav. He may not be the first bumbling coward with an open contempt for film to run a media company, but he is one of the worst at hiding it. This isn't an, a, a really an entertainment service. It's a functional product. Looting his own company for quick cash. Pissing off the best living filmmakers. Changing HBO Go to HBO Max to just Max. The app that gives equal billing to The Sopranos and MILF Manor. And going on a killing spree of finished films and series that proves he would axe his own mother if it gave him a tax break. Hey, Z-Bag, remember when DC Comics and Warner Brothers were run by a mob-connected parking lot company? I mean, that's more your speed. So pause. I was not aware of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that the, the Kinsey... Uh, parking lot magnate was he went down for mob ties or something like that yeah but he's also the reason why warner brothers and dc comics are there under was, the same roof there was this fascinating era in the 60s and 70s when you know because like everything was so different like the kinds of companies that would make huge amounts of money like today it's like tech companies you know but but back then it could be like literally any random company like a parking lot company yeah. was just doing huge business the other one that's really funny is the company that the the, the holding company that owns the majority stake in Paramount is National Amusements, which is a 12 theater chain in the Northeast. Wow. They own like 12 movie theaters in New York and also Paramount Pictures. That's got to be some kind of like tax avoidance thing, right? It's just, it's the Redstones, like the, the okay. Sumner Reds, that was his company, oh, and that's how yeah. he ended up being who he was. And so, yeah, it's yeah. like all kind of weird accounting or whatever. But yeah, there's, there's and it, it's always from, you know, like the boomer era. Like today, that doesn't happen. <laughs> But Zaslav, I mean, you know, the parking spot doesn't own like uh, Google, but like <laughs> back in the seventies, that stuff would happen. You can tell. I, I think that Zaslav is, um, depending on how you look at it, the the right guy at the wrong time or the wrong guy at the wrong time. The wrong guy. <laughs> at the wrong time. He's. You can tell what he's trying to do, which is to just cut everything except for the mega franchises that make the bulk of their money, and he's cutting the. 80% of the stuff that doesn't, not successful for the 20% of the stuff that is. But he doesn't realize that that's way more risky than the alternative because when these franchises peter out, which they're going to, Harry Potter, uh, DC Comics, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera, 
that whole that they're going to go bankrupt. Like there's nothing left at Warner Brothers if they've completely alienated filmmakers and lost the ability to develop original material. Yeah, it's just it's the incentives are really misaligned. Like he's incentivized personally to goose that stock as much as he can just drive that stock up the investors are happy he's happy everybody's happy nobody's looking at like warner brothers in 10 years is it still going to be a viable company so like i i just sense on some level like he really just transparently does not care like he yeah he's tanking the brand He's salting the earth so filmmakers won't want to work with them. He's throwing away finished movies. He's putting Batman on Amazon Prime and selling off Looney Tunes to the highest bidder because he's just not personally invested in Warner Brothers as a studio or as a legacy or as an ongoing filmmaking company. He's literally, look, numbers go Make up. Line he's go up, he's yeah. just, line go up. Like, he's just looking at that and whatever, literally whatever he could do. Like, I think Succession, actually, to bring it back around, their last season did such a great job of this. Like Kendall Roy is focused on this like retirement community and that's what becomes his obsession. But it's not because he really believes in it. He doesn't even think it's ever going to happen. Because it's because he can present to a board that like, oh, the line's going to go up this much if right. I do if we sell these entire people's lives. It, it, it's <laughs> just about how big of a pitch can I have so that the stock goes up enough short term. Yeah. It'll come crashing back down when people realize I'm full of shit. But, like, but his pitch is what if everything we make is as successful as only the best things we make right <laughs> like, and, and and i feel like zaslav is basically trying to do the same like he wants every movie to be barbie and if it's not barbie get rid of it because the barbie is what makes that line go the right way yeah yeah i mean disney can do it to an extent because there is a disney brand there is like okay we know what we're getting when we go to see a disney movie that doesn't exist with warner brothers you can't yeah. you can't focus it around the warner brothers style of movie i i think yeah there's also like warner brothers doesn't have like a parks and merch department that are going to call the film guys in a few days and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. You're, you're, you're tanking Bugs Bunny doll <laughs> sales. You know, like that's a big part of the Disney machine. They can't mess with it too much because no matter what, they got to sell Moana toys. Like no matter what, that's yeah. the most important. But they they do have an infinite number of home renovation uh, people, although I wonder when the housing market collapses, if that will still hold. Yeah. Too, <laughs> yeah, so. He's whatever. on some thin, thin ice. I don't. I can't believe how much true crime, like doing the calendar, because I do that that newsletter. So I, I look at everything that that comes out on Max, and the it, true crime dwarfs everything else. That investigation discovery mm. brand. Yeah. There's like five new things a week, and it's always like, well, this green grocer hacked up four women before they caught him in 1984. Watch all about it. Like, oh, great. I don't can't the, wait I, to check that out. I don't get the appeal, but uh, maybe they do. We'll see. But maybe. tons of like, it's like this uh, women who kill, cops who kill, silent killer, like while you were sleeping. There's one that's literally, it's it's just stories about people who were murdered while they were sleeping. Like That's, that's a good even, way to go. That's not even interesting. <laughs> like... Well, they were sleeping, so it's pretty easy. To... <laughs> Do you wake up? You don't and go. Need, ah! <laughs> you don't need to work it out that elaborate. If they're literally sleeping. You wow, just... amazing! It's a lot of killers doing doing that. Move. <laughs> oh, they could <laughs> tip Kind of use the Looney Tunes sound library that they own. <laughs> 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 yeah, they should start doing. That. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, stars <laughs> yeah. around go, the victims' heads. Yeah. Terrible <laughs> synergy. All right, keep going. Once again, it's up to Disney to save the day with a new CEO, the old CEO. This year, he's overseen hits like the worst MCU releases to date and the most disappointing Disney projects. But surely all the stuff they got from their acquisition of Fox will make up for it. These were totally worth spending the GDP of Panama on, right? I mean, you can't put a price tag on something like The Boogeyman, can you? <laughs> you can? Uh-oh. So while we peer so into the... I mean, I think it's a, it's a little early, but right now looking like one of the all-time massive overpays. Well, wait, they, the the biggest thing they haven't done yet, like the, the, the thing everybody was hyped about when Disney acquired Fox was X-Men, Fantastic Four, and they've just been sitting on Let's those, pretend those that X-Men and Fantastic Four uh, are all... They all grow six billion dollars. Oh, I mean, yeah, it, it, still, <laughs> still, still, it's a, it's about. It, I mean, it doesn't feel like they're doing as much as they could, even with the the what they acquired. Like, 
I, I kind of thought the Haunting in Venice movie was pretty good this year, yeah. but it just kind of unceremoniously got got dropped. And that White Man Can't Jump was was bad, but it went directly to Hulu. Well, because so they like, laid off so many people yeah. who were redundant, but now it's like you don't have enough people to correctly market your own films. Right, like what what's the point of buying a studio if you're immediately going to like shut down the studio? It's like, yeah. well, then you just bought a thing that you're just <laughs> closed. You just bought IP, baby. They're in the IP business. I guess, but like they're not... That's what they're not using. So it's it's like I guess they like there's aliens shows coming out. So like they are. Trying I mean, is it to so cynical to be like they don't even care? They just don't want anyone else to use it. I mean, I mean that's probably part of it. <laughs> and I, they I'm could sure, just they'll just sell it later. I'm sure that was part of the formulation that like it, you know we need to control all as of much these as Marvel can. properties so no one else can Sony us. You know because it's like that's what they're going through with the Spider-Verse. Sony is very very funny right they don't want another (laughs) spider verse so like this maybe was just like well let's avoid that i'm very that's the thing i'm looking forward to the most in 2024 three spider verse films terrible three not not necessarily terrible but you know good in a venom way sony i gotta say the the fact that madam web they're all in spider-man suits (laughs) at some point but we don't really see any of that is like that's very questionable. Like, what? You know they're going to throw one of them in there, Andrew Garfield, or somebody's going to show up in that. Because um, they can. Right. So why wouldn't they? They can't. Yeah. I don't. I Boy, I, that, that's so, that Madam Web thing is so, could, everything about it is confusing. Can you me. imagine how hyped you would be if there was a team up between Madam Web, Tom Hardy's Venom, and Michael, Dr. Michael Morbius. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's coming. That's yeah. uh, obviously. And, and Craven the Hunter. And Craven the, Don't forget Craven the Hunter. <laughs> to be released, Craven the Hunter. Craven the Hunter. Yeah, he's coming this year. I love it. Oh, wow. What are they, what are they doing? What are I love they that doing? they're just like the RC Cola, but also like 10 years too late to capitalize on this. But maybe it'll be all that's left. Who knows? I mean, yeah. I, I just, it just, it's. I, I think there it, it's entirely possible that that early stage MCU was just lightning in a bottle. It was a one time only thing. Nobody's ever going to be able to replicate. It. Like I, at this point, I do think that's possible. But it does feel like nobody's really trying to learn the lesson of like slow roll it at first. Not everyone is going to come out and be ten billion dollars and the big epic thing. Yeah. And like you don't have to interconnect them all that much right away. Just little. Hints and teases and post credit things. Nobody's learning that lesson. They all try to go too fast, jump right into the middle of the franchise, and then you get these chaotic half movie. Things. I do like. Well, I think its strength, uh, the strength of Venom, is how self contained it is. I, I, I think I like I like the, the Venom verse. Yeah, I think they're because they're just they're totally stupid and just embrace being silly. It, it they really do feel like holdovers from like the '90s era of comic books. Very standalone. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, here's to more Venom next year. Uh, keep going. To Venom. Void that stretches out before scripted media. Let's tie a noose around the year by rewarding its greatest achievements before Elon Musk tortures enough monkeys to stream it directly into our brains. <laughs> First up, it's the Chris Pratt Award for Ubiquitous Voiceover Achievement. And the nominees are Aquafina for playing Aquafina as a bird. Aquafina for playing Aquafina as a bird <laughs> again. And the winner is the Wikipedia for Aquafina's upcoming film, Wildwood, where she will be playing Aquafina as a mother whose child is stolen by birds. Don't run afoul of the bird community, Aquafina. You can't spell avian without A-A-V-E. Yo, got bird poop on a windshield. <laughs> so pause. Let's give out. Um, you can't spell avian without that, but I had to make a joke. That's close. Huh? Uh, you get what we're saying. Wildwood, I'm very excited for Mm. Uh, that's the, from the people who made Coraline yeah. and um, Kubo and the Two Strings. It's uh, Laika. Laika, that's yeah. who it is. So yeah, that's that's something cool. Yeah, her she gets she gets a ton of voiceover work despite not doing voices. She does a voice. She does a voice, yeah. and it's the same voice in everything. <laughs> yeah. You would it, it's weird, right? Like it's strange. At that a certain like, point, it's just like, well, you're just making this movie feel like these other movies. Like she's in the the new Kung Fu Panda as well. Again, yeah. Now she's a fox in that one, not a bird. <laughs> Very different. Still sounds like Aquafina to me. Yeah, I don't under, I, I don't fully get it. Um, but uh, gosh, I I feel like these decisions are all made, especially with animation, like two or three years ago. So this is probably coming off of. Um, what was that one with the grandma? It's very the sweet. farewell. The farewell and but that crazy was like occasions. A dramatic, like I, at that moment, I think we all kind of hope where I did that. Like, oh, okay. 
we're done seeing Aquafina do the same bit eight times a year in different comedies. She's going to start exploring different kinds of roles and different kinds of movies. And that was so good. And, and that feels like she gave I, yeah, up on that, right. and now it's back with to the timeline the same of animation. Bit. That's probably when she got booked for. Like four or five Red, we got Renfield this year as well with oh, her doing man. the same yeah. the same bit again. I'm just I'm tired of that bit. I'm just, I'm really tired of that bit. I don't <laughs> think right. it's that good. Of a new bit. Year's resolution for 2024. New bit. Aquafina. Pete new Davidson bit. and Aquafina. Get new bit. new bits. <laughs> Keep going. This year's Haunted Mansion Award or the least subtle product placement. Apparently, she uh, stopped off to get some ice cream. A little Baskin Robbins. And the award goes to Air, the movie about Air Jordans. Nope, wait, wrong envelope. It's Tetris, the movie about making Tetris. Uh, nope, wrong envelope again. It's Flaming Hot Cheetos. But that's just my grocery list. Oh, here it is. It's Blackberry, the movie about the Blackberry. We just love products, don't we, folks? Us product heads really got our fill this year. Yum, yum, give me some. Now, pause, the pause. Nick Cage. The fact that we made it through that whole segment without bringing up Shazam 2 and its insane mid-movie Skittles ad. Oh, like, God. That just shows you how intense wow. this year was in product placement, how much of it there was. It was a very heavy year. That When I was watching that, I was like, well, this is this is the new record. This is the most the most product placement any movie has ever done. They they even have characters say in the camera, taste the, taste rainbow. the rainbow. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's so intense. There was what, what other one just had a ton? Oh, Loki season two we showed. Yeah, it, uh, and, and I mean that 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 McDonald's. Barbie chase scene they cut to the like the the actual logos of the cars. The parade of Chevys. So yeah. much. Activate like, assisted driving mode, it. Barbie. Yeah, like we we get it. Thank I I know you, I know you had a deal to 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 make Greta. I know you had to make good, but like geez. Yeah, it's, really it, it, it's almost like like the third act of a Marvel movie where they just hand it over to a completely different team, where they just hand it yeah. over to like the internal branding it's department of Chevrolet. Just, yeah, this is just a General Mills <laughs> ad. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, good, good stuff. Good trend. All right, keep going. Good trend. I'm happy about it. Now, the Nick Cage Keep It On In The Background Award for the celebrity who made the most consistent but forgettable streaming releases of the year. And the nominees are Eddie Murphy for You People and Candy Cane Lane, Chris Evans for Ghosted and Pain Hustlers, John Cena for Hidden Strike, Vacation Friends 2, and Freelance. And the award goes to Nicolas Cage, who is in the retirement plan, Butcher's Crossing, The Old Way, and Sympathy for the Devil. Congrats, Nick. You may have been in a real good movie this year with Dream Scenario, but don't let that stop your accountants from saying yes to every offer addressed to Nick Cage. Daddy needs another dino skull. Ooh, this is a good one. It's 2023's best response to being called a Nepo baby. Sean Penn's actor's son, Hopper. I don't give a shit about that because I'm not one. Of course you aren't. Lenny Kravitz's daughter, Zoe. It's completely normal for people to be in the family business. It's literally where last names came from. You were a blacksmith if your family was, like, the black family. Okay. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis, daughter of two famous actors who wrote, uh, I ain't read all that. And the winner <laughs> is... Haley Bieber, who said, I am one, and I embrace that I am. Now, is that so hard? We just want them to admit they had an advantage, not put them into camps. Yeesh. Pause. Here. It's funny that Haley Bieber, of all of them, like, is it really an advantage to be Stephen Baldwin's daughter? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like she, probably, like, I guess so. A little, a little bit. If, if Biodome 2 is casting, yeah. yeah, you probably have a leg up. But uh, I found that very refreshing of her to be like, yeah, I'm an Epo baby, it helps. I just... It, it's so weird. I, I feel like it's always interpreted as like you're n you should not be in the industry like that. Like when when Meg Ryan uh, was defending her little boy, uh, Jack Quaid, <laughs> always going to be good. <laughs> if you're accused boy. of being an Epo baby, definitely get your mommy out there in front of the cameras to defend you. That's going to make it all go away. But anyway, when <laughs> when Meg Ryan was defending her precious little baby boy, Jack Quaid, uh <laughs> That's what she that like she was like well you know like well he has a right to act if he wants it was like of course yeah. of course he, he has does. a right nobody to is act. saying they don't have a right to and Jack Wade's good I think people like Jack Wade sure. and things nobody's saying he shouldn't be famous it's just the acknowledgement that it was maybe a little easier for Jack Wade to get his Hollywood career going than it would have been for some completely random guy whose dad was not Dennis Quaid and whose mom was not Meg Ryan. <laughs> that's, that's all. That's, that's all. all. It's very simple. And yeah. it's, it's like undeniable when you think about it on that level. Like Jamie Lee Curtis absolutely had a leg up by being the daughter of two very famous people. She's Hollywood royalty. It's not even a Nepo baby in that case. Yeah. I always like when they say, uh, I had to audition like everybody else. 
It's like, now, well, here's the thing. Okay, but those then you, but you got the, the audition. Those, you got, a, you got that audition, and B, the casting director and the director in the room know who your fucking parents are. Yeah. <laughs> They're very aware exactly who they'd be doing a favor but, to. But I think that, like, yeah, uh, everything you're saying is true. And it's just like, but it's it's also just being in that room to get the audition. Like, a lot of people never make it that far. And it's not about not being dedicated or not being talented. Like, yeah. being born in Los Angeles is a huge is a huge leg up. If you can, like, live with your parents and go on auditions instead of having to have a day job. Like, having the money to go get professional headshots or take an acting class. Or, like, there's, there's thousands of these little things that give you a little bit of an advantage. And when you're the child of a wealthy well-connected person you've got a lot of those that's all i think anybody is looking for is just like yeah. acknowledge that that you had these advantages and some other people that you're competing against did not acknowledge your roots your sweet sweet roots <laughs> yeah i mean that's i think that's a no it's it, it, it always comes from this like well you know but oh, i worked oh, hard oh i just i shouldn't be in movies at all like no of course <laughs> nobody's like well some of you but most no. of the most of you know of course quiet not. russell is a treasure uh, but I mean, his, he's there lot. because his dad is Kurt Russell. Yeah, there's a lot of talented people who are the kids of, of other talented people. And no, nobody, nobody wants to change that. Nobody's saying we shouldn't have that anymore. But some type of, like, asterisk. <laughs> if it gets brought up, not immediately jumping to getting super defensive, but just being like, yep, yeah. that, that having that guy be my dad was definitely a big help, yes. The lessons I learned on the set of Biodome were priceless. Yeah, like, <laughs> what? Yep, yes. Like, I ca- it, part of what got me here is that those people were my, my parents. Yeah. There you go. Like Jack Henry Robbins, the, the, the director, directed the Smosh films. He's made a few other movies. Yeah. Uh, he, he he's very upfront about it. Like, my dad is Tim Robbins. My mom is Susan Sarandon. It, it helped. <laughs> it certainly does. It, nobody's saying he's not a good director. He's a good director. He's obviously a good director. But even if it's not your parents, think about who your parents' friends were. If they're Tim Robbins, Tim Robbins like, is Susan Sarandon. Like, come on, come <laughs> yeah. on. Think about who they know. If you say I want to be a director, you, who, who who does your dad know? <laughs> yeah, like right. Like Susan Sarandon could call anybody. She's friggin' Susan Sarandon. Yeah. Anyways, um, let's keep going. We digress. Here's the McConaissance Award for the actor with the biggest assance of the year. <laughs> the Josh Hartnett Assance. The Lacey Chabert Assance. The Dermot Morona Assance. The Asai Morales Assance. <laughs> the Michael Sarah Assance. And the winner is the Jamie Foxx Assange. Not just for they clone Tyrone and the burial, but most importantly, not being dead, Phew. even though the internet said he was. And the internet is never wrong. <laughs> Finally, the Congressman George Santos Award for Best Cameo of the Year. I'm so proud of you for coming out as a furry. The nominees are <laughs> Gal Gadot in Fast X, Gal Gadot in Shazam 2, Gal Gadot in The Flash, and the winner is Bradley Cooper in Dungeons and Dragons. Oh. <laughs> there are no small parts, only small actors. And B Coops, you got to be both in this cameo. <clears throat> Better luck next year, Gal. I read Stars a, a pause. I read about the, that Dungeons and Dragons scene. Apparently, they shot a version of that with just a, a, a regular mm-hmm. actor, random actor that they cast for the role. And uh, on set, they were the, the directors were talking. They're like, you know, this would be really funny with a with a cameo. Somebody like. Bradley Cooper. Okay. And then they ended up getting oh, wow. Bradley Cooper. Like Bradley Cooper was just the first idea that popped in their head of somebody. It would be Give funny. Give me a Bradley Cooper Wouldn't type. it be funny if we did this with Bradley Cooper? And then they actually got Bradley Cooper to do it. That was a truly charmed production. Someone, it was like a reverse monkey paw curling that that yeah. turned out good. Wow. It, it really, even the trailers were like, oh. but like it actually turned out to be really fun. Actually it did. Yeah. Yeah. That's my uh, most delightful surprise of the year. Yeah. I was up there. Yeah. All right. Keep going. Stars War, Episode 23, The Broke Rider Strikes Back. That's a wrap on 2023. See you in 2024 with more honest takes on whatever Hollywood bothers to put out next year. And hey, if the movies die out, we can always pivot to election coverage. Many people that are, you know, major criminals, very few have had an honor of being indicted for it. I'll tell you one thing. I couldn't figure out how President Reagan was nice enough to send Air Force... A helicopter one. Based on what we've just been able to see, and because we've seen it or not, doesn't mean it hasn't happened. <laughs> She's Never under mind. 90. She has no excuse. 
<laughs> Lord, give me the those, those the, other, the military yeah. grade drugs that they're all on. Those other those other two guys are they're full on Irishmen at this point. <laughs> they're like ninety and in a room somewhere. But come on, VP Harris, come on. Oh, I love it. Um, yeah, you've got all your faculties, VP Harris. She's she's fully like you. You were at the point now where it's like if Selena Meyer from Veep were the actual vice president, it might be time like, for a Veep rewatch. Like I, I feel like she'd be doing about the same job. Yeah. Like there's really not a lot of daylight there. So good. I looked for a um, JLD really just for like a, to j- just to give it like a like a two and two. I was trying to find a good DeSantis clip, but he's just like too aggressive and unsettling. It's just yeah. like ah. ah, ah. Uh, woke mind virus. Yeah, like, I, I mean, it's just like you you can't part of the, the appeal. I'm not praising Donald Trump, but part of what I think people like about him is that it, it is the authenticity. You can't mm. pretend to be Donald Trump. That doesn't work. It yeah. has to seem like it's really. But DeSantis out of can you. pretend to be human. Yeah, like to say he just like immediately seems phony. Where it's like I don't, you don't really think this. Yeah. You're just trying to be like Donald Trump. Yeah, well, uh, it's got to ooze out of you naturally, gotta, organic. We want that ooze, folks. Yeah, we need that. Got to get ahead that ooze. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we did a fun video uh, also on this channel, the rise and fall of superhero movies, where they did mm. the. Uh, kind of the the metrics of audience and critic and box office uh, results from Superman to, to oh today. Uh, and we seem to have peaked in 2019. That sounds about Things right. Things seem to have been going downhill fast since then. Um, I mean, I think there is a compelling argument to be made that, like, Infinity War and Endgame, like, not forever, but, like, they probably should have taken a little beat after that and, like, thought about the next phase and been more deliberate instead of just like rushing rushing headlong yeah. into the aftermath so like, it, it gets let all it breathe into that. you know yeah uh no time to breathe but uh hit the uh hit the link to that and give that a watch i think that one came out really well um we don't have any outtakes because we used every single genius word we wrote <laughs> is on, is on every screen. joke we wrote this week was <laughs> really funny so, so good uh what can you do yeah what can you do um i hope you enjoyed it uh I was going to go into some Q&A, but there's no cues no in at the all? script. I'm assuming that somebody was asking them. You guys don't have a single cue for I it? I can l- open up. We can go like yeah. inside the metaverse. I'm sure it's just somebody's not um, pasting them into my script. I'm sure there hasn't been. Uh, can, I, can, I be, can I watch myself live? This will be fun. <laughs> Worlds are colliding. I'm going to go... Across the fourth dimension. I'm now watching myself live. Wow, it's uh, creepy. Where's the I chat? I don't like doing okay. it. Okay. I, I, I think we could see the future if we scroll Benz ahead. Ted, so you guys right? liked Adam Driver hosting SNL? <laughs> sure. That's, I saw some fun clips. I didn't. I really. I didn't see very much of that at all. I think I saw a, a sketch with him as like a baby on an airplane. Yeah, maybe? I saw a little piece of that. Yeah. Uh, I just think about one of my uh, the, one of the great performances in an SNL sketch was him as the like Daniel Plainview style bring your bring your parent to work day. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was that was great. I also love that one that he did with Beck Bennett and Kyle Mooney. That oh man, I'm all out of cash. <laughs> the Del Taco <laughs> yeah, commercial. Huh. That's good. Um, Al Mugdove asks, "What's our most expected movie of 2024?" <laughs> I mean, like one we know is coming out. Yeah. Dune 2, baby. Yeah. Can't wait for that one. There you go. Uh, that, oh, they're, they're, that's that's coming out. Dune 2. But, I mean, that's like that's not like uh, most anticipated. That's... I thought he was just asking a movie that we know is coming out for sure. <laughs> so I picked my most I – don't, I don't know what – I don't understand the question. Okay, well, what's our most anticipated then? It's probably Elsa. Probably Dune 2. It's probably Elsa. It's Dune 2. Dune yeah. 2. All right. Well, I guess uh, we're going to cut it short then. No, not many questions. Uh, Sorry. Zero questions <laughs> in the script. Um, but, uh, oh, well. Uh, we tried, folks. We tried. We tried. <laughs> I think we can, we can end 2023 that's, with that's that. That's the theme of all of 2023. <laughs> it's like, listen, we did, we, tried. We, did, we did what we could. We tried. And next week, uh, speaking of not trying, but we, are, we do deserve a break once in a while, <laughs> yes, is uh, we have two compilation episodes coming out. Um, all of our musical Ooh, stuff. Ooh, that's fun. Every song we've ever done. I got to say, uh, not to toot our own horn too much, but um, the song that we wrote for the La La Land Honest trailer about Moonlight yeah. <laughs> is, is probably the, my, my proudest that might be the That yeah. might be the the. the it's the been stuck in my head mark. all week um, looking back at I'll that tell one. you the one that forever ruined the original song is I Can't the Chimney Sweeps. 
oh, in Mary yeah. Poppins, I now hear <laughs> filth and grime, filth and grime. Like our fake version of it has replaced the original stuff. Yeah, there's time. a the um, for Cinderella. Uh, we are my smartest people. We will kill you in your sleep. We'll go ahead and tell somebody. No one will believe you. Uh, that one's in there too. Yeah, we so, watch these a lot before they come and out. And then we did. So, um, sometimes we selected our uh, the ten honest trailers for the. Worst films we've ever had to ha- Ooh, had the privilege wow, of covering. So okay. see if uh, see which directors are on there. I already have a few in mind that I feel like should be um, highly some surprise entrance when, when I was revisiting it. Uh, I didn't recall what happened in the kissing booth, but I had to throw the kissing booth because it's kissing booth one and two. Yeah, if it were just one, I think it we might never not did have made three. The cut. We should go back and know, do three at some kissing point. booth completion. Especially because Jacob Elordi, did you see the, the Jacob Elordi now? Now that he's doing classy films, was yeah. out there like uh, dragging the kissing booth movies, and then Joey King came out and she was clearly very hurt by it. I'm sorry, like, to hear I still that. like those movies. They are insane. Um, the it's, movies, the movies are. It, they're, they're, there's not, there isn't even a kissing booth. Yes, it's there a, is. No, it's a stage. It's a, there, well, it's a kissing It's a stand. kissing stage. It's it, not even a booth. It's a kissing proscenium. I don't know how you call your trilogy the kissing booth and never at any point feature a kissing a booth. A solid but. booth. We want the old-fashioned, like, Lucy from Peanuts style, the kissing is in. It's booth. not called the kissing stage trilogy. No. Oh, man. How dare you. All right. We'll see you next week for uh, Kissing Booth 3. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye-bye.